Hello, I am Professor Shlait Rakshit. I am recording this on behalf of Professor Gudmund Eriksson at OP Jindal Global University. The United Nations Children's Emergency Fund. What is it? The United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, the UNICEF, is a United Nations or a UN program established for the purpose of providing humanitarian and development assistance to children and mothers, primarily in the developing world. Its fundamental mission is to promote the rights of every child everywhere in everything the organization does. Now, what are the learning objectives? First, to understand the mission of the UNICEF. Two, to evaluate its policies. Three, to see how the UNICEF is an organization trying to preserve and promote the human rights of individuals and communities. Now, let us look into the mission statement of the UNICEF. The UNICEF is mandated by the United Nations General Assembly to advocate for the protection of children's rights, to help meet their basic needs, as well as to expand the opportunities to reach their full potential. Keeping in mind, in doing so, the organization has established a number of concrete outcomes to guide its various institutional activities. Health with a focus on improved and equitable use of high impact paternal, newborn and child health interventions from pregnancy to adolescence and promotion of healthy behaviors. Second, HIV and AIDS with a focus on them, improved and equitable use of proven HIV prevention and treatment interventions by children pregnant women and adolescents. Three, water sanitation hygiene with a focus on improved and equitable use of safe drinking water, sanitation and healthy environments and improved hygienic practices. Then there's a nutrition with a focus on improved and equitable use of nutritional support and improved nutrition and care practices. There is also a focus on education, aims at improving learned outcomes and equitable and inclusive education. Then there is a focus on child protection with a response of improved equitable prevention, a response to violence, abuse, exploitation and neglect of children. There is a social inclusion with a focus on improved policy environments and systems for disadvantaged and excluded children. In order to accomplish these above mentioned goals, the UNICEF mobilizes political will and material resources to help countries, particularly developing countries, ensuring a first call for children and to build their capacity to form appropriate policies and deliver services for children and their families. And it pays special attention to promoting the equal rights of women and girls and to supporting their full participation in the political, social and economic development of their communities. Concretely speaking, UNICEF collects and distributes information, research and statistics on the situation of children throughout its issue areas. It distributes supplies and performs logistical support for aid to children. It evaluates and identifies good practices to support its own work as well as the work of other organizations. It coordinates the activities of the UN system on issues regarding children, adolescents and mothers. And in emergency situations such as natural disasters and the aftermath of war and conflict. In situations such as these of civil strife, war and conflict, the UNICEF cooperates with other UN programs and agencies as well as human organizations to provide rapid response to children in need of aid. In this capacity, 
It acts as a non-partisan organization whose assistance is provided on a non-discriminatory basis. Now, let us look at the history of the UNICEF. The figure of the child as in need of special legal protection has a history dating back to the 1800s. It was in the mid 1800s that laws began to appear limiting children's activities in the workplace and ensuring their right to be educated. Protection of children did not really make an appearance on international stage. However, till the earlier 20th century. Faced with mounting reports of the horrors of children's exploitation in the workplace and the evils of human trafficking and exploitation, the League of Nations took up the case cause in its very founding document. Article 23 of the League of Nations covenant provided that the members of the League a will endeavor to secure and maintain fair and human conditions of labor for men, women and children both in their own countries and in all the countries to which their commercial and industrial relations extend. And for that purpose will establish and maintain the necessary international organizations. It will also entrust the League with the general supervision over the execution of agreements. These agreements were in regard to the traffic in women and children and the traffic in opium and other dangerous drugs. It is to be noted that to this end, the League of Nations established a committee for child protection and passed a declaration on the rights of the child. This is one of the oldest human rights instruments and dates back to 1924. The International Labour Organization or the ILO adopted a number of conventions on children issues during its early years, including Convention on the Night of Work of Young Persons 1919, Minimum Age for Work at Sea 1920, Minimum Age for Work in Agriculture 1921 and Medical Examination of Young Persons 1921. It is to be noted that the Second World War devastated the lives and support systems of a large number of children in Europe. During the war, the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Authority UNRRA, provided some support to these children in need of food, clothing and healthcare services. Following the war and the dissolution of the UNRRA, however, many of these children continued to require assistance. To that end, the UN General Assembly created UNICEF on December 11, 1946. At that time, its full name was the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. Hence, its acronym UNICEF took over the duties as well as the funds of UNRRA with respect to the needs of children and mothers providing food, assistance and medical treatment. For its first few years of existence, UNICEF's mandate was generally limited to the assistance of children in Europe. The UN General Assembly voted in 1950, however, to include the long-term needs of children and women everywhere, and particularly in developing countries. In 1953, the UN General Assembly voted to extend UNICEF as a mandate indefinitely and shortened its name to the United Nations Children's Fund, though the original acronym was kept. Since that time, the organization has remained an established part of the UN system. The UNICEF continued its work assisting children throughout the next several decades, demonstrating sufficient competence that in 1965, 
it was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in recognition of its work. This work was basically supporting mothers and children around the world. However, UNICEF in its early years shied away from the human rights dimension of children's rights. There were issues avoiding discussions of rights or presenting them carefully to refrain from appearing threatening to governments. As Philip Apson and John Tobin report, it was not until the process of preparing and developing the framework for the Convention of the Rights of the Child or the CRC that UNICEF began to gradually incorporate a human rights based approach into its work. The work on drafting the CRC began in during the preparations for the International Year of the Child in 1979. At that time, the UNICEF provided unqualified support for and the promotion of this process of drafting, ratifying and universalizing an international human rights treaty specifically aimed at the protection of children's rights. The CRC was finally adopted in 1989 and has become the most widely ratified of all international human rights instruments. Following this period, UNICEF made the CRC central to its priorities and programming and began to reorient its work around this human rights code. Today, UNICEF continues to maintain strong support for the CRC as well as the human rights approach in general. And not only that, has become a leader on international human rights based approaches to protection and development. Having said that, let us look into the institution of the human rights. UNICEF is headquartered in New York City, though it also maintains seven region offices, a supply operation in Copenhagen, the Innocenti Research Center in Florence, and country offices around the world. As a UN program, the UNICEF is formally controlled by the UN General Assembly, which regularly reviews its activities. It reports to the Economic and Social Council, which also appoints its executive board. Now, what is the executive board of the UNICEF? The UNICEF's executive board is made of 36 members representing five regional groups of UN member states, currently eight African states, seven Asian states, four Eastern European states, Latin American and Caribbean states, and Western European other states. These members are elected to a three-year term of office. The executive board responsible for approving UNICEF's policies, country programs, and budgets. It meets three times per year at the UN headquarters in New York. The UNICEF is headed by an executive director who is appointed to a five-year term by the UN Secretary General. The current executive director is Anthony Lake, former US National Security Advisor, who began his term in 2010. UNICEF's budget is made up of contributions from governments as well as private donors and donations collected by UNICEF. This is collected by the UNICEF national committees. The UNICEF has a role to play for, as a forum for human rights, especially children's human rights. Children's human rights are an area of special concern in international law. Although children along with adults are protected by general human rights rules, they also receive additional support under many human rights instruments. Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, for example, proclaims that motherhood and childhood are entitled to special care and assistance. All children, whether born in or out of wedlock, 
shall enjoy the same protection. Both the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights that is the ICCPR and the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights ICESCR also provide special consideration for children. ICESCR Article 10 for instance states that special measures of protection assistance should be taken on behalf of all children and young persons without any discrimination for reasons of parentage or other conditions. Children and young persons should be protected from economic and social exploitation. Their employment in work is harmful to their morals or health or dangerous to life or likely to hamper their normal development. And those who employ children in such conditions should be made punishable by law. States should also set age limits below which the paid employment of child labor should be prohibited and made punishable by law. In addition to these provisions in general treaties, children rights have also gained prominence through the elaboration in dedicated human rights instruments. The premier international treaty on the subject is the 1999 Convention on the Rights of the Child which is known as the CRC. This was the most widely ratified of all international human rights instruments. The CRC sets out a series of rights that apply to children defined as human beings below the age of 18 and mothers including child specific rights such as the protection of children, best interests, parental guidance, survival and development, protection in the event of separation from parents, family, reunification, kidnapping and respect for the views of the child. In addition to the rights of general application such as non-discrimination, freedom of expression, religion, association, education and so on. The other child specific human rights instruments including ILO convention, it says that 182 on the worst forms of child labor and the African charter on the rights of the welfare of the child. Now approaching child protection through the lens of human rights is important. Why? The reason is it emphasizes children not simply as the recipients of charity or the beneficiaries of protective measures but rather as holders of rights and agents whose opinions and desires matter to decision making. It emphasizes that children's rights are not optional or a matter of a country or private organization's goodwill, but rather an obligation of the state. In addition, it justifies a broad mandate focused on elements such as gender and equity and a life cycle approach rather than a narrow one aimed at simply supplying food, shelter and basic health care as a way of meeting children's immediate needs. Because of its status as a UN project and its fundamental mission of promoting the rights of every child, everywhere in everything the organization does, UNSF is a natural forum for human rights work with respect to children. It is to be kept in mind that all UN entities must abide by the UN Charter which establishes the human rights as a major institutional goal. It states, we the people of the United Nations determined to reaffirm faith in the fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in equal right of men and women and of nations large and small. In this context, UNICEF's work on children on health, nutrition, sanitation, water, education, protection and social inclusion contribute to the fulfillment of children's human rights. 
Moreover, the fact that UNICEF has a presence in almost every country on earth makes it uniquely positioned to promote human rights. And this human rights can be promoted across the world. UNICEF is committed to framing its work via human rights based approach with a particular focus on gender and equity. Its aim is not simply on meeting children's needs, but also recognizing and realizing their human rights. This realization is across a wide spectrum of activity. To this end, it has made the CRC, uh, the children's rights, the central component of its institutional framework. According to UNICEF's mission statement, UNICEF is guided by the Convention on the Rights of the Child and strives to establish children's rights as enduring ethical principles and international standards of behavior towards children. As part of its efforts to protect children, the UNSF advocates on behalf of increasing ratification and implementation of the CRC and its optional protocols on the involvement of children in armed conflict and the sale of children, especially child prostitution and child pornography. In order to prevent such social evils and analysis, it provides policy and legal support states to assist them in implementing the CRC domestically and it provides support to the Committee on the Rights of the Child. The CRC's treaty body in the form of advice, assistance, monitoring implementation and the preparation of reports as emphasized in the CRC itself. UNICEF also cites the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDAW, as central to its mandate and mission. CEDAW provides the basis for UNICEF's drive for gender equity in its programs. The UNICEF stresses the links between CEDAW and the CRC, citing both as fundamental to its work on the right of girls. In order to provide better protections to mother and girls, UNSF has adopted a gender action plan for 2014-2017 that outlines in detail the steps UNICEF plans to take in the medium term to operationalize its ongoing commitment to mainstreaming gender throughout its work program. In addition, UNICEF adopts an equity strategy that is uses to translate its commitment to rights into action. Via this equity policy, UNICEF is committed to ensuring special protection for the mostly disadvantaged children who are victims of war, disasters, natural or man-made, extreme poverty and all forms of violence and exploitation and those with disabilities. As such, it pays special attention to children who are also members of minority groups, indigenous people, are disabled or are particularly affected by poverty and violence. UNICEF has committed to applying a human rights based approach to all of its programming. A recent independent evaluation found that within the UN system, UNICEF is a leader on the application of the human rights based approach, playing a very key role on human rights issues within the UN system as well as integrating a human rights based <coughs> approach into humanitarian and emergency framework. Further in programs at country level. While the evaluation identified a number of points on UNICEF could strengthen its human rights work, for example, with respect to their lack of strong disintegrated data to support non-discrimination efforts, the lack of success at ensuring transparency with respect to rights holders, and the unsystematic approach 
on application of human rights based approach principles throughout the program or the program development process. However, its overall conclusion was that UNICEF was a very strong actor in the human rights field. It is to be kept in mind that all of UNICEF's programs in some sense aim at protecting the rights of children. Some examples of its human rights work for children include conducting multiple indicator cluster surveys that collect statistically sound internationally comparable data on more than 100 indicators for the purpose of assessing the situation of children and women including in the areas of education, health, gender equality, rights and protection. Providing emergency supplies in over 40 different combination consisting of items needed for children, immediate survival and recovery from trauma in situations of natural and man-made disasters and conflict. Promoting the rights of girls to education and training to the United Nations Girls Education Initiative. Further, working with governments, civil society, communities and others to design and implement an array of programs and policies on early childhood development. It also tries to mainstream disability such that children with and without disability are including together in an equally supportive environment across UNICEF programs. Working towards making schools and home healthier for children through water, hygiene and sanitation which is known as the WASH programs that work with governments to create the conditions for ensuring access to clean water, promoting hand washing and capacity building. Also, it aims at developing resources and policy tools for addressing child poverty including through enhanced measuring criteria such as integrated household service. Thus, to summarize it can be said that although UNICEF has generally a strong record on human rights issues, it does work in various fields, promotes programs and objectives and even awarded the Nobel Prize. Some questions of criticism of the UNICEF's approach remain. In 2004, for example, an article in the medical journal, The Lancet criticized UNICEF's moves to a human rights based approach, arguing that it brought with it an unfortunate turn away from the health needs of children and a focus on child mortality and morbidity. Several authors have also criticized UNICEF's policies on adoption, arguing that UNICEF's discouragement of international adoption programs has led to decreased welfare for orphans. Thank you.